new toys to play with, but the box is far too big for my bench, so let's unpack it. Hmm, still a bit big for the bench, but anyway, this is the 998D uh, soldering station, and this one is branded as Heizuko. Um, I think that is, but I don't think that matters. Um, lots of these are available on eBay and the like, and uh, it comes with a uh, 907 uh, handle here, which is becoming the sort of standard, and this is based on the Hakko design, and uh, I quite like this, and this is already the sort of thing that I use on my soldering iron as it is, so uh, I've got lots of spare parts. And speaking of spare parts, there's a spare heating element here for the uh, 907 handle, which uh, is nice to have, but to be honest, when you can buy the handles for 3 or $4 sometimes, um, it seems a bit daft spending the time changing the element. The iron stand here is one I've also got before. It's quite a nice stand, I quite like this one. Uh, it's worth adding a bit of weight to the bottom, however. But here we're starting to see the reason why I bought this unit, uh, to replace my soldering iron here in the shed. And this is a hot air rework uh, handle that blows hot air out of the end uh, so that you can flow solder. And this is one of those with the uh, fan unit actually in the handle. This is just uh, an electrical cable here so it blows air through the handle past the heating element in this section and uh, out of the end and you can uh, control that flow a little bit more with uh, these uh, ends here which uh, have various dimensions diameters on the end um, i don't know which one i'll go for probably start in the middle there's also this uh, handle holder here which uh, fits on the side and uh, that fits in there rather snug excellent now I've plugged the supplied handle in here and uh, this was supplied with a 13 amp plug so uh, I want to check the uh, continuity to the tip make sure the tip is grounded and uh, yes it is so that's a good start I'm a bit more confident about plugging this in so it's set up on my bench now and it does just about fit. The rework handle um, is on its holder. I've screwed that into this side and actually there aren't any screws on the other side so it's left hand side only. Um, I've plugged in the uh, supplied um, soldering handle there and uh, yeah so we've got the two screens, uh, three rotary knobs here and two power switches but nothing is really very well labeled this knob here just says heater but uh, it's surrounded by this border so i'm guessing that is the temperature knob there for the standard soldering iron because down here with this uh, border here within it are uh, the air and presumably that's the speed of the airflow out of the uh, rework handle and again heater in degree c um, so that is the temperature um, but these power switches well they're not marked at all so we're assuming the one on the right does the standard soldering iron because that's where that's connected and the one on the left does the uh, uh, rework handle perhaps we'll see let's try the standard soldering iron and uh, it came up with a hundred there and now we've just got three dashes so if I increase the temperature nothing happens so perhaps that is the rework handle let's just turn that down turn that one now the top screens come on 100 and yes there we go that is now increasing as i set the temperature and let's go for about 350 there is a uh, dot there on the uh, bottom right hand corner of the screen that clearly is showing that the heater element is on and presumably yet yeah, when we get to 344 degrees it thinks um, that is just flashing away now to maintain a temperature so uh, theory has it that's up to temperature in fact that's something I can test let's uh, find my uh, sol soldering iron thermometer so the uh, soldering iron is apparently at 344 degrees centigrade and uh, it's been sat there for a while, so this should have uh, got to a point where it's evened out. So if I pop 
a bit of solder on the end there and try it on my Hakko cloned um, thermometer here. Oh well, it thinks 370 degrees there, quite a bit higher. And uh, unfortunately, I can't see any way to calibrate this. So uh, just for my own peace of mind, I'm going to drop that down a little bit. Let's uh, go for 325, I think, there. And uh, we'll give it another minute. We'll try again, because I like to solder at about 350 degrees. And uh, that might be a bit higher than some people, but I think uh, soldering, it's all about rhythm rather than the actual temperature. I find that uh, 350 is about the right uh, temperature for my particular speed of soldering or my rhythm. Right, well, with the 998 now reading 326 degrees, will it be closer to the 350 uh, degrees that I'm used to soldering at? Let's place it on that crimp. And uh, what have we got? 340, 343. Yeah, that's about right. Just perhaps a little bit low for me, but uh, obviously this is a little bit inaccurate. And perhaps there is a calibration pot inside there we might find one day but for today at least 325 degrees on the screen gives me about 350 degrees at the tip and well that's all right for me that works with my speed of soldering now i've moved the soldering iron off to one side and i probably should have mentioned actually that this cable is quite nice and silicony quite malleable probably better than some of the 907 handles that I've bought previously. Uh, but onto the hot air rework handle. And uh, again, this one feels quite nice in the hand. It's quite well weighted, I would suggest, um, in the middle. And there's this rubber flange here to stop your fingers getting too close to the hot end. But yeah, it feels quite nice there, I think. Pop it back in there. Now, I think it was the right hand switch wasn't it to uh, switch that on we've got those three lines suggesting it's off and if we turn the air up and the temperature um, nothing happens because uh, i think this has some sensors in the handle so when it's sat at this sort of angle pointing up it should uh, not work so if i pick it up yes there we go so it's trying to get up to about 210 degrees there and uh, it's humming away but do you know what it's not too loud at all and uh, let's not get too close but yes there's definitely heat coming out of the end there and if I pop it back in there does that switch off uh, it is dropping isn't it the temperature's dropping because it's back in the handle so there's clearly some mechanism in here to actually turn off the heat so uh, we're down to just 100 degrees and in fact at that point it switches off so uh, let's see what we can do with the hot air rework station well firstly actually i'm just going to shrink some heat shrink tubing because i think that's one of the really useful things about a uh, hot air rework gun like this and uh, yeah that seems to work nicely it's saying we're just at 200 degrees. I'm not sure what this particular heat shrink is rated for, but it's uh, certainly better than using the edge of your uh, soldering iron or a lighter or something like that. And that's quite a nice controlled way of uh, shrinking heat shrink tubing. Now it's probably worth checking the uh, outputs here. The soldering iron is claimed to be 60 watt and the hot air 580 watt according to the manual but before we turn those on just notice that the uh, the watt meter here is showing four watts when uh, actually the 998 unit isn't on and if i remove that yes so this has some level of draw even when the switches are off that's worth noting so let's turn on the soldering iron and yeah, that's gone up to 59, 58 watts while that heater's on there. So uh, that's definitely pulling um, 60 watts. I think that's fair enough. Um, so we'll turn that side off, allow the meter to settle down. And we'll make sure 
that the heat and the speed of the gun is up reasonably high and we'll remove it from its holster and yeah 585 watts we did see there and it is showing 550 570 something like that so it seems that those uh, numbers are reasonably accurate now I've put the 998D on the shelf above my bench uh, to make a bit more space and of course the main reason I've got it is to help me solder surface mount components and uh, I've got this little tester kit here you can buy these they're dead cheap off eBay 99 pence 99 cents that sort of price uh, and it's just a simple uh, circuit board here well PCB I should say with a uh, the solder pads for various different sizes of component 0805, 0603, uh, 1206, that sort of thing. There's also a SOP16 on here, and as you can see, I have done this before with my regular soldering iron. Um, and it's quite tedious and difficult, and I gave up pretty much on these 0805 uh, resistors here. Um, they're quite difficult, you have to put pre-tin the pad put the component on with some tweezers and heat it with the soldering iron it gets quite difficult so uh, I thought a rework handle might be quite useful and this has come with a load of resistors and different things so let's give it a go but I've bought this um, solder paste here and this is XGZ40 uh, mechanic solder paste and uh, yeah it comes in this syringe which is really handy for squeezing out onto the pads but oddly mine didn't come with a needle but uh, as it so happens I do have a blunt needle uh, it's the sort of thing you get with um, inkjet filling cartridges so I now have everything I need hopefully to uh, pop some paste on a few of these pads so uh, let's give that a go now I'm very much a beginner at uh, surface mount soldering but uh, I've got my paste here and I'm going to try this by eye initially on these uh, 1206 pads and uh, I've that does seem to be coming out no it's not staying behind though is it that's not too bad um, yeah perhaps I need to get the uh, microscope out so i think the magnifying glass is going to make this much much easier let's uh, get a bit of paste here on that pad squeeze that paste off doesn't seem to want to stick well there's definitely some paste there hopefully that's enough and in fact might be enough on the end of the nozzle without me squeezing to leave that little blob behind as well excellent right the next job is to get a uh, 1206 resistor there right at the bottom of your screen onto oh it's flown out of my tweezers let's just try and pick it up and drop it again yeah it's the right way up now we can just see that this is very small um, these are uh, reverse tweezers perhaps aren't the best idea but i've got it now i think oh that's not so uh, good is it what is it it's a 43.2 ohm resistor Ooh. right that's roughly in the right place but hopefully that will straighten itself out when we apply some heat so i've set the gun now to about 340 degrees according to the 998d and i've set the fan speed quite low because i don't want this component to uh, blow off the board so let's see what happens when we start heating it up well straight away we can see there that it's drying that oh hang on oh my goodness that's worked really really well it's straightened up the component both sides have flown oh look at that even better 
there we go i think that's soldered look how straight that is so i've zoomed in a bit closer here and oh my goodness that looks absolutely perfect i'm so pleased with that result that's excellent so the smallest components on this board here are the 0603s so oh we're going to be able to do this oh there's i seem to be quite shaky and perhaps i need a finer nozzle on my syringe here or perhaps I'm worrying about this far too much because, oh, that last resistor seemed to work perfectly. Well, if I thought the uh, solder paste was difficult, these resistors are absolutely minute. Oh, that one's the wrong way up, but as I got it in the right place, I don't fancy trying to switch, turn it over. Oh, go the right way up, resistor. Oh, no, it's the wrong way up again. Or oh, are they both the right way up? That's one way of looking at it. Right, they're both on the PCB. Let's see if they will solder. Well, I have to say those temperatures worked so well last time. I'm going to try the same ones this time. And uh, that solder paste is drying up and then flowing. Oh, that's just so cool when it does that. Look at that. They're brilliant. Oh, I'm super pleased. I've got a new favourite toy. So that's the 998D soldering station. That has the uh, hot air reflow workstation built into it as well i'm quite pleased with it there is a question over that four watts that it draws when it's not in use but i switch off all the power in the shed anyway when i leave and uh, now that i've labeled it up i think it's a lot more clear there is a slight inaccuracy here on the screen but i think i can live with that for now so hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.